Jim, Jim McGregor here again, uh, CES 2024, and I'm with BrainChip now. And BrainChip has AI accelerator technology. So Todd, Vera, you're going to show us some of this technology today? Absolutely. And what I first want to show you is this is our first endeavor to work with microcontrollers. Microchip that is a low power microcontroller and we're using the SAM V7 development kit and we're actually integrating our module with our AKD 1500 chip that's a Global Foundries 22 reference design. And right here I have audio keyword spotting. Now this is a fairly simple demo and if you look at the screen what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some keywords and it'll repeat those keywords as I say the command. Up, down, left, seven, on, wow, Sheila, Marvin. <laughs> I like that one. Nine. So that's it, does, a, it does it within about a second. Yeah, that one's actually very nice. Uh, we put a user display on it. And the nice thing about this is, like I said, this is with a microcontroller. So there's no Linux operating system. It's bare metal. We're actually communicating through a SPI4 interface. And we're getting very good response time uh, with this development kit. And as you can see here, Here's another demo with the microchip board. And what we're doing here, this is a person, no person detection. So as we both get out of frame, let's get out of frame. And you can see it says no person. And as one of us comes back in here, it'll recognize that a person is there. Now, one of the key things is same type of, same board, same development system, but I'm using a SPI4 camera with a microcontroller. Mm -hmm. And you can see the camera frames per second is about 7.2 uh, frames per second. And like I said, this is a low res SPI4 camera, but you can see the inferencing on the AKD1500 is about, uh, you know, 15 times better performance going through a controller. The limiting factor is this board. So this is really good because this is how customers are going to be doing it at the very low end next to the sensor. You don't have a Linux operating system. Yeah. You don't have a big microcontroller that you're doing it. But I'll go to another version of one of our demos here. And this one is with our partner on semi. So this is a time of flight sensor. And as you can see, it's actually given me a depth map over here. So I'm looking at grayscale and a depth map. And right now it is configured to recognize a face and I can actually edge learn. This is myself over here. I'm going to put my name in here. And then as I get in, it learns my name. So now it recognizes me. The other thing about this depth sensor camera, you can see these coordinates. It's looking at my nose and my shoulders and given X, Y coordinates and position within one to, I think one to two meters, one to three meters. And this is, you know, can be used for like an in-cabin uh, sensor demo mm -hmm. or application where I want to deploy an airbay. I need to know where the position of the head is, where the position of the shoulders are, and I can actually do some calculations based on how close or far away. So as I move closer to the sensor, you see how the, the depth is getting closer because my hands oh, are yeah. red as coming away. So this allows me to do one-shot learning. I can give some configurations to it. And we're actually working on other types of uh, demonstrations with this that'll show, um, like if you left something in the back seat or a computer or a child, a mm -hmm. dog, whatever. And you can actually do that with this type of- Now, is that just uh, measuring depth or distance or is it also measuring infrared? So it is an infrared sensor. Okay, okay. Okay, and it's basically te testing the reflection back of how long that takes. So as I said, you know, it, this is two demos in. One is a facial recognition part. I come in here and I just edge learned here. And if you come in here, you know, try and, try and get in here a little bit closer. So I'm gonna, right there. So hold on. And I'm gonna put Jim in. And I'm gonna learn your name. And now it learned you on the fly on hardware. So it's actually doing the same application. And I come back in here, recognizes oh, wow. me. Both of them. Yep. Both of us. So the nice thing about this camera, you know, it does about one to three feet in depth. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the interesting things we found out about this because it has infrared, I got to shut this down to show you our next demo that is in the Prophecy camera here. So Prophecy, I get in here. I got to make sure this is set up right. Hope you don't mind us 
Oh, demo. come on in. Um, actually, this demo's shut down right now. I got to restart that one. But uh, let's let's go down here. I got another couple demos down here that are that are really cool. So this one is. So we're we're talking about the performance and showing how much better the performance is or what the performance is. What about the power consumption? So if you take a look at this demo, this is actually looking at the same thing we did, but the camera is an RGB camera. So I'm actually looking at the performance, 23 milliwatts for inference power. And now what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edge learn a couple different, um, this is a tiger. I can edge learn tiger on here. And now it recognizes the tiger with one shot learning. Different data set, it's looking, instead of a time of flight sensor, it's using a regular RGB camera. So I can add anything in here. You know, we have a car. I can put a car in here and Edge learned it. Car. So that, I've Edge learned this. That's not just a car, come on. I think it's a Mustang. It's a Mustang. It's a Mustang. <laughs> So we have different things, and we could take anything. It doesn't really matter because we trained this on an ImageNet data set that mm -hmm. has all these feature extractions from a lot of various uh, different objects. And we're actually extracting features on this and shifting those weights on the last layer to recognize a tiger or a car. And then finally here, we have, this is Inviso. This is one of our software development partners. This is real application software that's running, you know, it could be ran on an in-cabin. And it's actually giving me head pose. Okay, so you actually, I'm going to get out of frame here and show you the way you're looking at. And it's actually doing emotion detection. So if you smile, you can uh, look at happiness. You can try and look. There's fear, anger, sad, surprise, disgust. Wow, Surprise. it actually works. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they're using our cards in here to inference on, but it's their application software. I can't get sad to go on there. I'm trying. I guess yeah, I'm just the, the, sad. The, the hard ones are fear, and anger, and disgust. Those are the three okay, toughest okay. ones to do. And we'll get people in here trying to make faces. Let me see if I can, you know, like, <gasps> surprise, anger. Okay, and now, once again, we're doing this, a lot of these applications are just running with microcontrollers. So, really, the processing for all this is being done on the BrainShip solution. Yes, we have a card that's plugged in into these systems. Now, these are Linux-based systems, whether it's an IBM, I mean, a Intel-based host processor, the card is plugged into the slot here. This is an ARM-based processor plugged into that slot. That has a microchip uh, processor, um, ARM-based M7, uh, I believe. So we're agnostic to the CPU. And so in these applications, it's not a matter of necessarily the power consumption savings. It's the fact that without the brain chip, you couldn't use it. Correct. So, but if I was going to plug this in, say, with um, maybe a low-end application processor or SOC, you know, um, that either doesn't have an NPU or does have an NPU, you know, we're still talking only, we're only talking about milliwatts of processing power, correct? That's part of it. Now think about when I make a model, okay, on most, if you're using a CPU or GPU, I have to write software. Yes. That software applications code to do the inferencing, you have to manage the bus bandwidth of what's going into your system, do interrupts. With Akita, I'm basically making a model. That model, once I make it, it's not running on the host processor. So I make a model that does, you know, face detection or image classification or whatever. That's actually running on our or our MPU and is not using the CPU. So I'm using the CPU for applications and I'm using the Akita for those coordinates on like the uh, um, time of flight sensor or I'm using it to identify the head pose or the happiness operations. I'm using a neural network for that. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the Akita 2? This is actually all ran on Akita 1 hardware. Oh, wow. Akita 2, um, we're in the process of taping out and we'll get that silicon back a little bit later. But these are all just Gen 1. So with the Akita 2, we have a lot more capabilities. We're handling 8-bit uh, quantization for weights and activation, skip connections, um, and a lot more uh, time of flight sensor type things with our uh, TENS network 
Mm -hmm. temporal event-based neural networks, and we also support vision transformers on Akita too. And this is what we'd call a traditional AI workload. If somebody wanted to transition this to maybe a very specialized general AI model, that'd be feasible too as well? Yeah, so we can support any type of models. A matter of fact, if you look behind you, we have a, a screen with some of the demos that are a little bit more complicated to, to bring here. This is our beer tasting demo. We actually have sensors in here reading alcohol, glucose, pH, and sodium, and it's determining the difference between a pale ale and a stout. So you take a look at those sensors that we dip into the beer, we're doing some measurements, and then it's determining that it's a uh, stout beer. So there's a lot of different use cases that we can do. It's pretty much endless. And whether it's a liquid or a gas, um, you know, it doesn't really matter to us. We're a network accelerator that'll, once you develop that network, it'll do uh, computation on whatever it is you're looking for. Okay. Todd, thank you for your time. Uh, although I have to tell you, you just took the fun out of drinking beer so <laughs> or tasting <laughs> beer. <laughs> well, it's funny because in a... Our team in Australia did wine. In America, we wanted to do beer. So that was uh, <laughs> one of the interesting things about it. So but you're ruining you. both. Ah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.